vectors vectors so under vectors we we'll look at the definition how to represent a vector how to find the modulus or magnitude of the vector how to add and subtract vectors multiply a vector by a scalar find the unit vector and also the position vectors so let's start with the definition vector is a quantity which has magnitude and direction so if you have a quantity that have both magnitude and direction it's called a vector as for instance, a car that travels a velocity of 1 km per hour on a bearing of 080 degrees, the magnitude and the direction are given. So it's a vector quantity. The magnitude is 140 km per hour, while the direction is what? 080 degrees. So we still have other quantities that are vectors, which are force, weight, displacement, and acceleration. So we are done with the definition. So let's look at the representation. So a vector is represented basically with a line segment. So the length of the directed line is proportional to the magnitude. So the magnitude, the length determines the magnitude. They will still do the magnitude or modulus of a vector. So if you have a vector, So if you have an arrow, so whenever you see an arrow, maybe from A to B, it shows that AB is a vector. Or maybe we can still represent it as you draw a line segment. The arrow, where the arrow is pointing is the direction. Or maybe you use a lowercase letter A. So this means vector A. So this is one way we represent vector. We can still represent it using only magnitude and direction. That is, it could be represented. Maybe if you have a vector A, you can see something like this. That vector, as the second way you represent a vector. You see a vector, you see something like this. The magnitude of A, comma, the angle. So, this is the magnitude is equal to the magnitude where theta is the direction so that's another way we represent vector if you don't represent it as a line segment or maybe a, a, a letter with an arrow on top we can still write it this way so another way we can still represent vector we have four ways the third one is using column vector yes so we might represent this vector A as, so the X component is always the magnitude cos the angle, that's the direction, while the Y component is the magnitude times sine theta, where theta is always the direction, the angle. So this is, the, this is another way of representing a vector using column matrix, that is as a column vector. So finally, there is one we use unit vector. You might see a vector like this written A, maybe A1i plus A2j. Though what all, all I focused on 2D two, two vector, we still have 3D vector. Maybe if you have A3k, that's x, y, and z. Or mostly, all our question will, will be centered on. 2D vectors, that's X and Y. So these are the four ways we represent a vector. So look at this question. So look at this. We ask if R, if R is a vector with magnitude 10 and direction 200 degrees and another vector Q with magnitude 16 and direction 20 degrees. We have to find 3R minus, minus 2Q. So that's what we have to find. Okay, from the option, before I, because I normally, once I see option, 
I need to look at it to know who, how, how I will start. Looking at this, you see that I have the direction as 200. So I'm going to convert this to column vector, but I need to move this 20 degrees to 200. Yes, because that's what I'm seeing here. So how do you do it? So let's convert first. Vector R to a column vector. And I remember from what I said, you can convert it to a column vector. As you can see, see the column vector. So the uh, to get the, the x component, you multiply the magnitude by cosine of the direction, the angle. So I'm going to do it here. So this is 10 cos 200. So why this is 10 sine 200. So that's it. Y for Q. Y for Q will have 16 cos 20 and 16 sine 20. But I want to convert it to the angle to 200. If you could remember from third quadrant trigonometry, Cos 20 is the same as minus cos 200. Yes. If you could remember in third quadrant, if an angle falls in third quadrant, to get the angle, example now, if you ask to find the equivalent of 240 in first quadrant, you do the given angle, which is 240 minus 180. So 240 is equivalent to 60. But remember, cosine, cosine and sine are, are both negative. So I'm saying that this cos 20 is the same as minus cos 200. Yes. So times 16. So I have minus 16. So I have minus 16 cos 200, yes. So cos 20 is the same as minus cos 200. The same is also minus 16 sine 200. So that's our knowledge of trigonometry. Check it now. If you check cos 200, is the same as minus cos 200 minus 180. And 200 minus 180 is 20, so that's it. So the two are equal. So meaning that, that um, so therefore we are asked to find 3R minus 2Q. So which is 3 times R is, is 10 cos 200. 10 sine 200 minus 2 times let me, let me remove this so 2 times q is now minus 16 because 200 minus 16 sine 200 so that's it so we'll open up open up the, di the the angle so i'm saying that 3r minus 2q is now equal to 3 times 10 is 30 so i have 30 cos 200 30 sine 200 minus so okay okay let's two times that is my so minus two times that is 32 minus 32 cos 200 minus 32 sine minus 32 sine 200 
so which is minus so we can minus times minus is 32 so we'll add correspondingly this and this so 30 cos 200 plus 32 cos 200 is 62 cos 200 why 30 the same is also 62 sine 200 so from this what do you notice the magnitude is 62 why the direction is 200 degrees so we we'll still move back to the form the original form given so that's how we we'll solve that 